Welcome to Night Owls. This is a new series where I'm going to be going through the fundamentals of fundraising. It's pretty obvious that the content I generally post is quite advanced in terms of fundraising, and I appreciate there's a large portion of the audience that need to learn and understand the fundamentals. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to start from the very beginning, and I'm going to take you through a little slice, and I'm going to be posting them on a nighttime, so you've got no other distractions. You can just sit and watch. So here's the first one, and let's start at the very beginning, which is understanding where you are in the fundraising circle of life and who's going to invest in you basically. So what you can see in front of you here is something called the startup growth life cycle and it's designed to map out the average journey of the average business. As you can see as you mature which is the red line you pass through various stages of fundraising. So let's start at the very beginning as you can see this is before there's any revenue before there's any time the co-founders or the founders of the business may have to chip in. Once we start generating revenue or not, or spending any money, we start to slip into what we call the valley of death. The valley of death is where most businesses die. 10 out of 11 businesses die here and 78% fail to raise their second round. And what it basically means is you're burning more money than you're making. So you've not broke even yet and you're very new in your market. So you won't have product market fit and you won't have that maturity we expect from a larger company. As you can imagine, there's only a certain amount of investors or funds that will fund this stage in your journey. And they're generally crowdfunding, although rare, accelerators, angels, friends, family, and fools. And that's what we call seed capital. As you progress and move through, as you can see, you go through the first, second, third fundraising round. We call those series A, B, C. And they're generally dominated by VCs and corporate VCs and family offices, private equity, perhaps. And then you move through to IPO, but I don't care about any of that stuff. I really focus on this first early stage and how to get out the valley of death alive. Pre-seed, seed stage, pre-series A, venture, series A, B, C. There's lots of words and labels we put on stuff. And ultimately in fundraising, I want to put you in a box so I can benchmark you against other businesses. And to do this, we give you names. What we'll focus on generally is pre-seed and seed stage in these videos, um, but we'll cover the rest so you understand it. A pre-seed business is generally concept only or prototype. It's generally limited revenue traction, limited data on customer demands, and pre-regulatory approval. So that's generally for fintechs who need banking licenses or med tech who needs, you know, CCG approvals or, you know, government processes. As we move through the venture stage, this is more for established businesses who've got a business model that works. They've got technology and IP. It's generally dominated by VCs, like I say and their focus is on scaling your business, breaking even or profit and establishing market dominance. Startup stage, seed stage, pre-series A, who's going to invest? So let's break through them now. Three Fs, friends, families and fools. Friends and families in a friend and family round is often misconstrued as I'll oh, go and ask your nan for 20k. It's not. It's designed by default, I guess, to get the entrepreneur networking and stimulating some form of community around the brand. Friends and family are obviously easy targets, but an investor you meet online and nurture a relationship or some startup friends or what that, that counts, you know, it's all about your initial network, your core group. And this can be people from your old jobs. It can be people that you've met over time. It, it doesn't have to be your granny is what I'm trying to say. Fools on the end there, we put fools for those passion investors, those who follow with their hearts. They're tourists, as the VCs will call them. And generally, um, they make random investments. They don't really follow a thesis at all. The next you'll see is angels. The median's 50K, according to the British Angels Association. Although we generally see tickets ranging from 10K to 15K. These are going to be XC level executives, maybe X entrepreneurs, although they're slightly trickier to deal with and generally come with a fund or a family office. Um, and, you know, just passion investors in the space. Anyone who's earning over 100K really and worked in a job for three years, that's what the FCA um, states. 
syndicates of angels i don't love them i think they're quite um inbred in the sense that it's about kind of passing their own deal flow and forming investor communities i think they can be a bit of a time sink but they are useful there are some great ones like the green angel syndicate and henley business angels are very active so again they're normally alumni or you, you just have to navigate those but be cautious they often come with big fees Micro seed stage VCs, my favorite, Fuel Ventures, um, SFC Capital, uh, Hatch, these type of businesses that are looking for SEIS funding. Generally, they've got quite firm terms. They may use vesting periods, which we'll cover another day, and they're generally taking 20 to 30% equity. Valuation really matters with those, um, so keep that in mind. It's going to be a finance process and a deal-making process. Accelerators and incubators are very, very difficult as well, just because often they're new and there's not much track record behind them. And um, there are some big ones, established ones like Y Combinator, for example, but generally we see lots popping up, offering big cash prizes, big equity, big promises. So I was ex I always please ask people to be cautious with accelerators and incubators. You can really get in bed with the wrong person. And we've seen some quite tragic cases of this it's it's something to be wary of and finally equity crowdfunding it's a mix of everything above it's really easy to sort of understand it's basically just a retail investment platform so that gives a bit of an overview of sort of the startup scene who's investing what they're investing in and sort of where your business is and next time we'll jump into some more detail i'll catch you then